What's up, guys? It's Lefty here with the Betting Network Early Market Report for Friday, May 21st. If this is your first time watching a market report video, I'll try to link one of the earlier market report videos I did in the top right-hand corner. Uh, in the first few videos I did, I explain in detail the basics of reading the market, so you can check those out. Um, I do a better job at explaining exactly what we're trying to do in these videos and what we hope to achieve. Um, as always, because it's so early, it's important to remember that the data we see on screen that we'll be analyzing is only reflecting a very small amount of bets. Uh, these numbers will certainly change as the day goes on. It's still helpful to see the starting point because oftentimes something we see later in the day will make more sense based on something we noticed early in the market. Uh, these numbers can tell us a story, and right now it's the opening chapters of that story. So let's hop right into it. We have the Friday, May 20th schedule on screen here. Uh, let's take a look at, uh, we'll go Milwaukee, Cincinnati here. Um, bets look pretty much split, nothing crazy going on here. Milwaukee's getting 52% of the bets, while 55% of the money. Uh, Pinnacle is up 10 cents from the opener and Chris is down a little from the opener uh, this is a game I don't think I could back Hoffman here um, but then again I can't really back the Brewers bats either right now um, you know the Reds got smoked yesterday against the Giants but oddly enough um, that puts them in an okay spot here uh, their bullpen should be rested uh, when a game gets out of hand like that so quickly, teams don't use their top arms in the bullpen. But I think actually Milwaukee had a day off yesterday too, I'm pretty sure. So uh, that probably cancels out because their pen should be rested. But too many conflicts in this one. Likely a game I just dismiss and don't really dive into unless the market really switches or shows me something. But Cincy in the over would probably be the play if I just had to bet this game. It's probably better spots out there, though. What else we got? A lot of missing data here on some games. Undecided pitchers. This is a good one here. Um, Dodgers, Giants. Got Bauer versus Wood. Two good pitchers. Uh, bets and money or look like they're siding with uh, the Giants here at home. 62% of the bets. 60% of the money. Uh, no line movement at all, which makes sense. The Dodgers are kind of like a public-heavy team. Um, you know, as good as the Dodgers lineup is, they, they struggle against left-handed pitching. Um, this is a spot I'm looking at the Giants here, especially at this price. Uh, I believe Alex Wood's the real deal. Uh, I know his numbers are really good. I believe he has like a whip below one. His ex-fip is in the mid-twos. Solid ground ball pitcher. Um, I like the Giants in general, actually. I've upgraded the Giants bullpen and their bats uh, three straight times now. I usually update my power ratings every four or five days, and the Giants are a team that just continues to show improvements. Um, you know, one thing that they're really good at that I've noticed, um, you know, and why they're playing so good lately is their ability to platoon. What that means is um, they can alter their lineup to their strengths, um, versus lefty pitching and righty pitching. So watch this. When they, they're they facing Bauer today, um, they'll go with a lefty heavy lineup. Um, they got the guys to basically go with a full lefty lineup. That should give Bauer some issues. Hopefully the public will drive the price on the Dodgers up more and uh, can get a good number on the Giants. This would be a spot where I'd want to wait instead of rushing to bet, bet on the Giants um, with the Dodgers being such a you know, public favorite team, um, that line might get uh, inflated a bit and can come back with the uh, underdog Giants. But then again, the word's kind of out on the Giants. It's, there's no secret now on them that they're um, a good team. What else we got here? We got a lefty-lefty matchup here below with uh, Rondon and Montgomery, White Sox, Yankees, uh, Money on the White Sox, which makes sense versus lefty. 62% of bets, 76% of money. Line hasn't really done much. In fact, Chris opened White Sox 115, and now the Yankees are 110 favorites. This is something, all right, the, you know, the White Sox continue to be underpriced versus lefties. I talked about this um, the other day, um, 
But the White Sox are the best team in baseball versus left-handed pitching. At some point, the odds makers have to adjust for this. Uh, I want to say there's something like 23-2 and two, um, against lefties their last 25 games. You'd think now like odds makers would price you out of backing them or something. Um, I think I have to bet the White Sox here just based on principle alone. Because uh, I'm going to continue to bet them you know, until the lefty trend bucks me off them. Or odds makers start factoring in their dominance versus lefties into the price. But at this rate, I don't think it's ever going to happen, you know. But I'm not really complaining either. Um, what else we got here? A uh, couple more undecided pitchers. No data there. Houston, Texas. Astros versus Rangers. Mm, Houston getting action here. And it's getting respect on the line. Pinnacle's up 12 cents. Chris is up 5 from the opener. Um, betters must believe in this kid Tyler Ivy, I guess. Uh, Astros top pitching prospect who was just called up this week. Probably a good spot for him to make his major league debut too. It's against the Rangers offense that has some holes in it. Uh, and I, I like, um, you know, giving a, um, you know, a first start on the road. I feel like it's better to get your first start on the road. Not as much pressure or media, you know, rather than, you know, at home. Um, this is a tough betting spot, though. Getting the Astros at minus 120-ish uh, with the way they hit seems like stealing. But obviously the catch is you got to back a kid making his major league debut. Uh, but this is like um, a FOMA spot, like a fear of missing out. If this kid Ivy comes out sharp and looks good, we won't see him at this price ever again, you know. Um, but like I always say, you know, one of the few advantages we have as bettors is we get to pick and choose what we bet. You know, uh, we don't have to make a decision on every game. Uh, the odds makers have to make a price or a decision on every game. We just have to find the ones they might have messed up on or got lazy. Uh, you guys in the Discord have heard me say that probably a hundred times, but um, I say it because, you know, passing on games is good. You know, um, you got to start looking at it as saving money. If you pass on a game and it loses, to me, that's as good as a win, you know. Um, you're laying $11 to win 10 so every bet you make costs you money. So you want to be sure of your bets and be selective. All right. Um, what else we got? The, oh, Urena. This should be interesting here. Um, yeah, Casey getting 76% of bets, 87% of the money. No surprise there. Um, this almost seems too easy for the Royals here. Urena is probably the worst starter in baseball, and I'm not even exaggerating. Um, but Detroit and Detroit can't hit lefties either. I'm pretty sure Mina already had a start against them early this year and completely shut them down. Uh, the total is getting a lot of under money, but then again, it's still, it's still not even 700 bets yet too. So this will even out here. I can't really trust that 96 percent. Um, and it's eight and a half. You, it would go to eight if this was sharp money, you know. What else we got? Um, this will be Strasburg here for Washington. Uh, not enough data there. And this will be Martin Lopez for the Sox. The Sox, J.D. Martinez bailed me out last night in the, the ninth with a two-run shot. That was nice. Um, all right, that's going to do it for now. Uh, hopefully you guys got something out of this. Uh, do me a favor. <clears throat> if you watch these videos, let me know in the comment section what you prefer me to talk about or talk less about. I only get like 10 views on these videos, but if it, even one person wants me to talk more about a certain aspect, I'll do it. Uh, I know everyone just wants picks, but trust me, the only way to be successful betting sports long term is if you learn yourself. It's the only way. Um, you know, I know some of the sharpest betters in the business right now. Um, I really do, and I have access to their picks. I can see when they make them because, you know, I have relationships with bookies that give me their agent login so I can see the back end. Um, and I can't even just follow the sharp betters every bet, even if I tried. You know, lines move too quickly. Uh, the market changes so quickly, and they're... You know, these betters, they buy back on games. It's just impossible to win money following someone else. Um, will it work in the short term? Like, 
you know, some weeks or months, sure. But eventually everyone's weaknesses get exposed. You know, you can't be clueless and try and follow someone sharp. It just catches up to you. Um, that's my rant for today. But I'll, I'll see you all in the next, uh, the next one. Um, good luck with your bets today. And as always, may all the umps calls go your way.